to you by new Polydent tablets, the powerful new denture cleanser tablets to keep your breath fresh, keep your smile bright and natural. And now, let's all play What's My Line? Let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, a young lady whose busy current schedule includes a television special with Donald O'Connor and a guest appearance on CBS TV's Wild Wild West, Miss Phyllis Newman. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here tonight, and I'm also very happy to be able to introduce one of my most favorite talented comedians and writers. He has a new play called Don't Drink the Water, which is opening November 2nd at the Morosco Theater, and it's very funny. Mr. Woody Allen. Now I'd like to introduce a lady who opens September 27th at the Alvin Theater in Dinner at Eight, the lovely Arlene Francis. I'm staggering a little. Our publisher panelist is really a charming fellow, terribly nice in every way. But he, as you all know, has a problem. Puns are his problem. And he has just told me his introduction for John Daly. And I'm staggering under it. And I'm afraid he may tell it to you. But here he is anyway. Forgive him, Bennett Sir. <laughs> This is a true story. It's not a part. Oh, I can't listen. It was told me by the president of the St. Joe Bank in Elkhart, Indiana, the other day. And it uh -huh. seems that uh, once John Daly, our panel moderator, had a piano that went out of kilter, and he sent for a man to have a tune, and the man who came was named Mr. Oppenacherty. And when he finished, the piano was in worse shape than ever, and he said, you'll have to do this over again. And the man said, oh, no, Mr. Daly. For you, Oppenacherty only tunes once. <laughs> there was a splendid, if slightly devious, gent who was the hero of that story, but John Charles <laughs> Davis. <Taylor. laughs> I was sick when I got here. <laughs> Wretched shape now. Apodocony. Uh, Apodocony. Apodocony. Don't repeat it, John. Only, yeah. Ever. That's very good. Well, thanks, Bennett. <laughs> wow. I uh, tender apologies to everyone. If I'm a little bit dense tonight and sound dense, I have the finest coat in the nose that I've had since I was a boy of about nine. Start the season properly. But Phyllis Newman, this cheers me up to see you here. And Woody, I you, always start laughing when I'm with you, so that helps a lot. And Arlene, I gotta let you in on a joke. Next Sunday night at about 8.30 at the St. James Theater, you are going to appear with uh, the American Ballet Theater in a fashion show and dance to support yes. the American Ballet Theater. Well, I didn't want to miss it. So I went over to the St. James Theater tonight to see it. Oh, you did? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this has not been my day. And then I got here and Bennett told that dreadful. So put your blindfolds on. I'll get even with all of you. Because we're going to do some strange things tonight. We've got some wonderful occupations and some wonderful people here with the occupations. We'll also have a uh, second mystery guest before the panel later on in the, in the program. But right now it's time to meet that first mystery challenger. If the blindfolds are all in place, are they, panel? Yes. yes. Good show. Then will our first mystery challenger enter and sign in, please. Well, as you know, we have a different form of questioning which will apply here because we have two mystery guests tonight. You ask one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise. We give you absolutely no prior 
advice or knowledge at all. You just start cold, and we'll begin cold with Phyllis Newman. Oh, thank you. I'm just going to plunge right in. If I um, tuned my television set in every, say, Wednesday night or some other night, would I see you on a regular television show? No. Oh. <laughs> One down and nine to go, Woody Allen. Uh, I, you are uh, in the entertainment field, though. Yes. Miss Francis. Are you a picture personality? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> do you have anything whatever to do with the sport world? No. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Phyllis Newman. Um, d do you, uh, do you sing? Yes. Mr. Allen. Did you ever make the statement, we will bury you? No. <laughs> Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. I'm going to take a wild guess from the quality of the voice yes. and ask if you are now singing at Basin Street. <laughs> no. 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 Five down and five to go, Bennett Stern. I don't know. Uh, just to make sure, you are a male personality. <laughs> Four to go, Phyllis Newman. Uh, this isn't a question. This is a statement. You're a girl? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That, this is a girl. Yeah. Uh, girl? <laughs> Why do you talk so funny? <laughs> no, girl. Uh, <laughs> do you uh, uh, appear in uh, nightclubs? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, do you fiddle around at all with opera? Yes. Miss Francis. Is it Leontine Price? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Leontine, this, needless to say, is but an extension of that glorious Friday night when you uh, launched our Metropolitan so gloriously, our new Metropolitan so oh, gloriously, yeah. in uh, as Cleopatra. Cleopatra, Cleopatra. You wouldn't like to do an aria for us right this time. Oh, why not? Oh, <laughs> uh, you was one. I think, uh, to me, one of the really fine moments, which I actually got in the newspaper, was that wonderful story in the New York Times that had a picture of your mother and dad. Yes. And your brother, Colonel Price, and he was standing in the door, you were facing him, and your mother and dad on either side of him. Either you said something or your mother or dad had said something. And he had his head back and was roaring yes. with laughter. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, I do. Actually, it, it was very amusing the way it came about. We saw the grinning crisis this week because George was just promoted to lieutenant colonel one day before the Metropolitan opened. Mm. So the only way he could possibly upstage me, being my brother <laughs> at this point, was to wear his full dress officer's outfit. So I was teasing him about it. <laughs> oh, that's what he was wearing. Yes, exactly. Well, that's what he had, a, a white dress uniform. As bright a white as I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, it was a He couldn't outshine you, Miss Price. Oh. <laughs> nice as he is. It, it was a great night for the Prices. The story said that your mother and dad had come up before when you uh, made your debut at the Met, I think they came Yes, they did. As a matter of fact, they haven't been in New York since then, and they're watching, of course, tonight. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Well, may we express uh, to them, through this wonderful medium, the pride we all have in you as an American. Thanks very much for honoring us by coming to watch Thank you life. so much. We'll have another contestant for you in just a moment after. Now will our next contestant enter and sign in, please. Edward. Libby. Right, sir? Would you tell us where you're from? Pleasantville, New Jersey. Pleasantville, New Jersey. Yes, sir. And now would you, uh, if you don't mind, tell us how many years you have. How old I am? You yeah. Mm-hmm. Ninety years and six months. Ninety years. <laughs> Ninety years. May, I, may I 
to present our panel, Mr. Libby. And now, if you'll come over here with me, sir, we'll uh, let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right. Thank you. Panel, we can tell you that Mr. Libby, at 90 years and six months old, is salaried and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Mr. Libby, do you work outdoors? Yes, I do. Do you use your hands in your job? Yes. Uh, do you in any way work in the soil? No. Nope. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Levy, I can eliminate the Boy Scouts, can't I? <laughs> <laughs> Does your service involve in any way animals? No, sir. Two down and eight to go, Miss Phyllis Newman. Uh, Mr. Libby, if I wanted to use your service, uh, could I? You could. And if I, if I used your service, would I come to you? No, not directly. Uh, <clears throat> no, actually, what Miss Newman means here is that she would have to come to where you are to get the service. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I see. Now, is it a service for which one pays um, money? Yes. And have you been doing this for a long period of time in your life? Yes. And it's outdoors. Yes. And you said you do work in the soil? Excuse me. No, no. You not don't in work the in the soil. It's no. outdoors. Outdoors. Uh, do you wear something other than a business suit? No. You wear a business suit? Oh, I do not wear a business suit. Oh, no. you don't wear a business suit? Wear something other than a business suit. Do you suit? wear a, a uniform or costume of any kind? No. no. Now, this, this uh, is meant to convey only one thing, and that is that Mr. <coughs> Libby does not wear a business suit, but he doesn't wear any garb which would right. identify the occupation. Mr. Allen? Uh, and is what you do done on uh, anything other than dry land? No. 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 It's done on dry land. Four down. And that's, it's raining. Then, of course, you've got a different situation. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francie. Could young people ever use your service, Mr. Libby? Other people? Young. Young people? Yes. How young did yes. you have in mind? Well, I mean, could they come to Mr. Libby and give him some money and uh, uh, get whatever his service is if they were about... 15 or 16 years old? Yeah, they yeah. could. Yes. They could. Mm -hmm. uh, do you hold something in your hands when you work with your hands? Yes, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Not to suggest all the time, but it is necessary that, in, that he does have things in his hands during the period of the is service. What you, <laughs> is what you have in your hands anything in the food or drink family? No, man. That makes it five down and five to go, and Abadunity only dukes down. Mr. Libby, does this, uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? Well, uh, there is a profit. There is. <laughs> I would think under the broad umbrella of profit-making and non-profit-making, it is not a charitable organization or an element of government. We would consider it a profit-making, although... Well, don't, don't give me a no. Did you say non-profit? Yes. Yeah. You I did? I said you work for profit-making organizations. Oh, you did say that? Yeah. Opportunity not... only strikes tunes. Yeah, all right, fine. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, do you sometimes, then, perform your service free? You say sometimes it's profit-making. No, we're talking about the organization here. It could or could not be. We have agreed that Mr. Um, Libby is salaried. Do you work for anything that has anything to do with health or the law? Other than which? Health or the law. Has anything to do with health or the law? Specifically, you mean uh, when you mention these two areas that there would be a specific application to either uh, getting health or holding health in terms of uh, medical treatment or law in terms of hiring the services of a lawyer or going into a court, something like that? Is that what I said? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm, we have anything but, to do with, the, with the doctoring or nursing or any legal work. Doctoring or nursing or legal work. Thank you very much. That's six down and four to go. For okay, I'm going to go to a whole other thing. What, what, uh, before you said that you sometimes hold something in your hand, is what you hold in your hand, say, uh, uh, larger than my purse? 
Yes. It is larger. Does it have moving parts of any kind? No. Nope. That's seven down and three to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, would I avail myself of your services under any conditions? You could, mm -hmm. yes. I could, and would I leave you happier? Would all depend on what you did, actually. <laughs> We'll say it's possible you could leave Mr. Libby happier, but uh, it would it pretty much depend on you. Oh, really? You mean I could fail at it? It's possible, yeah. <laughs> In your see. case, highly unlikely, I suppose. But... Oh, oh, really? Uh, well, I didn't mean that. I was just saying that. Do you, would you uh, come in actual physical contact with me? Oh, no. no. Eight no. down and two to go, Arlene. Mr. Libby, do you work at odd hours rather than nine to five? Well, I have no specified time to work. Yeah. You can work at any, any hours, any hours that please you. And all the time that you are working, you are outside. That's right. Even in the winter? Winter and summer. Winter and summer. Doesn't it get awfully cold for you? <laughs> <laughs> You're strong. <laughs> Do you move around in your job from place to place? I do. Might you possibly go from door to door in your job? No. No. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Libby, after you have performed your service, does the place where you have performed it look any different? No. Nope. Not a bit at all. I'm surprised you didn't get this. It should be no. transparent. I mean, after all, Mr. Libby is 90 years and six months. And I can't see why you shouldn't have thought of it I immediately. I that bad to make the place He's, look bad, do I? No. But you have a hot painter or paint something. Signs like paint or signs. Or it's or a golf caddy. <laughs> and it, it's more fun than that. He's a golf caddy at the Atlantic City Country Club. No. Which occupation he took up at age 75, having oh. heretofore been a carpenter, but they wouldn't let him climb anymore. So they, they wouldn't let him <laughs> climb anymore. He said, well, I'll take up another job. And he's been caddying since he was 75. Does it summer and winter at the Atlantic City Club? Marvelous. And I think it's just it rains too hard. Why? I go inside and wait for it to stop raining. <laughs> <laughs> That's just wonderful, Mr. Libby. And thanks very much for being with us. And <laughs> We'll meet tonight's second mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this... And now the second special feature in our program, the appearance of a mystery challenger, and the blindfolds have to be in place again. Panel, are they in place? Yes, Back sir. on. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? Again, panel, a gentle reminder, one question at a time in turn moving clockwise. We'll begin things with uh, Bennett Sir. Well, I was wrong about the sex of our first mystery guest, uh, but I didn't hear any wolf whistles for this one, so may I ask, are you of the male persuasion? Yes. <laughs> Miss Newman? I'm going to keep asking the same question until someone answers it right. If I t put my television set on on a weekly basis, would I see you? No. No, wrong uh, again. No, wrong again. <laughs> One down and nine to go. Woody Allen. Are you in the movies? Uh, sometimes, yes. <laughs> Miss Francis? Do you also appear in the theater? Oh, at, at times. It depends very much. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sir? Have you ever been on the panel with us on this show, What's My Line, Sir? On a panel? On this particular panel. Oh, on that particular panel, I think if memory serves, yes. <laughs> do you have... Oh, I'm sorry. Phyllis, your turn. Do, do you have a cute face and a beard? <laughs> well, they're not separate, you know. Say the name. Should I say it's Peter Ustinov? Yeah. <laughs> Well, 
a joy to have you back. We didn't last very long, Peter. But no, we... I've got your cold, incidentally. Already. Oh, well, no, I, I, I knew <clears> it. I've got a worse thing. one than you have. The week... What do you take? No, I guess we shouldn't get into that. I've got some wonderful old home memories. I'd be the wrong sponsor. You'd be the wrong sponsors, right. And, uh... Could you still remark me? The last picture you made, I remember you wrote it, you directed it. You didn't act in it, but sometimes you write direct and act. Or do you act yeah, in it? Yeah, Lady L, did you act in that? Too? Oh, just a tiny thing. Yeah. yeah. What, time. what are you doing here now, Peter? In I'm, I'm doing um, a television for a, a, another... Oh, please. Chain. Another chain. Well, <laughs> in, 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 hello. We don't recognize any of This country's yeah. so free, I never know what I'm allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing to do then is try it and see what happens. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm playing Socrates. That's why I've uh, so extensively... Oh. But you've got a book coming out in November. I thought that's what would have brought you. Yes, I've got a book coming out on the 7th of November. What's this? It's called The Frontiers of the Sea. It's a book of short stories. About the sea? Uh, one of them is about the sea, yes. Are you a sailor? Yes, I am. Are you a good sailor? Yeah. I mean, canvas-type sailor? I don't get sick. What, what do you mean? Uh, no, can, you, <laughs> can you run the stuff up the mast, you know? Yes, the yes, and there's very little chance of my going up with it. That's why I'm a <laughs> fairly good sailor. But in fact, I take my children every year somewhere. We went to Yugoslavia this year. And sailed in, down? In the boat, yes. We sailed, sailed right down, down, from, down yes. from the channel? Yeah. Golly, that's no, not from the channel, from the Mediterranean. From the Mediterranean. Do you have well, a, we've been to we, Turkey, we've been to Tunis. But do you got an auxiliary in it, Peter, or do you go just under cloth? Oh, no. <laughs> auxiliary, auxiliary. Yes. no. Because this is, you know, I did a little bit of this this summer, and I have a tremendous respect for people who can, who can really handle sail, because I think this is the most exciting way to be on the water. Trying, first of all, on a calm day to catch yes, some wind, and when you get some wind and she heels over, well, that is, that is great fun. Yes, and, and when the furniture goes with it, and uh, <laughs> you get a sense of repose there, which you don't get on land. <laughs> but then you've always been, you can write insurance on it. That's what I really like to do. I did it in San Francisco Bay. Have you ever sailed in San Francisco Bay? Yes, I have, but um, I, I like the Mediterranean because every time you stop, you're in a different country. <laughs> and it makes it kind of <laughs> exciting. It's a good geography lesson. That's, that makes, uh, I hadn't thought of it that way. Of course, in San Francisco, every time you stop. Don't you have to, uh, Peter, have some special papers to get into Yugoslavia? No. They welcome you, tourists? Oh, yes, they do, do yes, absolutely. Oh, that's Al Albania is different. Yeah, you because uh, they okay. haven't the know-how to take away the mines which the Italians put there in 1939. So you don't want to go near there? No, you don't. And yeah. I tried to avoid it, and the Greeks opened fire. <laughs> Albania is the one country that's loyal to China today. I thought yes, I, I, got, I went there for one afternoon, Bennett. I, I could, not be, being British. <laughs> you see? And I must say, I saw four cars. Two of them were very old Russian cars, full full of Albanian officers, and the other two were two brand new Italian cars with the chrome shining, with two Chinese officers in each. Okay. And it's like, it seems to me like Africa in 1880, 1880. Yeah. Yeah. with the, with the uh, high commissioners being the Chinese. It's mm. the most extraordinary atmosphere. Horrifying. Horrifying. Well, you had a good summer. Much success with the book, and, and uh, much success, I hope, in staying in America. We'd like to see you over on that panel again very soon, mm -hmm. sir. Very, very honored. And thank, thank you, you very, very much, much, Peter, for being with us. <laughs> I think we have to agree that you've done very well tonight, panel, and I congratulate you. We didn't fool you very much. We'll all be back after this word. Man, everybody's got a cold tonight, huh? <laughs> my, my, my. Well, again, may I say, Phyllis, it was a joy to have you with us, and Woody, Thank you. to have you here, too. Hope you had fun. We tried to fool you, but I don't think we fooled you, but we had a lot of fun, and that's important. Yes, the golf yeah. caddy. And good night, Miss Phyllis Newman. Good night, John. Thank you. Good night, Woody. Good night, Phyllis. Good night, Arlene. Good night, my dear. Happy opening. Thank you. Good night, Bennett. I really think we had two very distinguished mystery guests tonight. Indeed. That, that goes for you, too, John. Good night. <laughs> He's just paying me back for that pun, you know, <laughs> that's all. And Arlene, I'll see you next week at St. Yes, James Theatre with again. the American Ballet <laughs> Theatre. We'll dance together, shall I we? Hope so. And thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a TBS television.
Computers and Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cox. This is Johnny Olson speaking. Miss Francis Gown is from Bonwit Cup.